When commissioning your 6000 XP, it's important to familiarize yourself with the settings you have available. Before we begin, ensure that your load, generator, and grid breakers are all in the off state and the battery breaker is on. Now to enter the settings menu, hold the enter button for 3 seconds and release. You should hear a double beep when you let go and the screen will be flashing. Since we're commissioning on the physical interface, we're going to turn off the buzzer during the process for my sanity's sake, and likely yours as well. The first setting to go to is setting 5. Press enter once on the setting and down to change to disable, then press enter again. All of the settings can be changed this way, but some will restart the inverter, even if you've left it to default. Next, we're going to go in order starting from setting 1. This is the date and time. This helps track your timeline of generation and consumption if you're connected to the web monitor, but is also needed for determining warning or fault timestamps and for setting up time-based settings. Setting 2, PV input, determines whether your PV will input as separate strings or if you will combine them into a single input. This defaults to separate MPPTs, which is the most efficient method unless you have a single large combined array running into one input. Setting 3, battery type, is very important. This can be set to lead acid, which doubles as open loop lithium, Li ion, which is the closed loop lithium setting, and no batteries, which is very niche and not recommended for normal operation. When selecting a lithium ion, you will need to input a battery brand. We have a battery compatibility list that will be linked in the description to see what brands work with which number, but EG4 is the default value of zero. If you select lead acid, you will need to adjust the voltage parameters based on manufacturer specifications. Setting 4 is output voltage and frequency. The default is 240 volts at 60 Hz, which is the standard for the USA. This will be left unchanged for most. Setting 5 is the buzzer enable, which we will leave off for now. Setting 6 is max charge current. You can change your charge rate of your batteries here, primarily to limit extra grid or generator use, but it's also useful if you have an open loop small bank with a charge limit below 125 amps. Closed loop banks will automatically adjust the base charge limit. Settings 7 and 8 are for adjusting voltage limits in lead acid mode only. Setting 9 is the max discharge current. This is the max power your battery bank will output when it's in inverter mode. Setting 10 allows you to change between voltage and state of charge control if you are in lithium mode. Setting 11 is the cutoff point for inverter power to switch to grid. This defaults to 15%, but can be raised if you want to switch the grid with more reserve energy in your battery bank. If the grid goes down, it will switch back to battery or generator. Setting 12, while seemingly similar to 11, is for total battery cutoff. This is the point at which the battery will stop being discharged even if the grid and or generator are not present. If there are no other options, the inverter will simply stop outputting power until PV, generator, or grid is present. Setting 13 is for AC voltage range with APL for a lenient voltage window and UPS for a tight voltage window. Setting 14 is AC charge setup where you can input a start and stop battery charge value and a specific time of day. Useful if you have a time of use plan with free power nights or weekends. Setting 15 is the grid input load time where you can input set times to be running on grid power. It's useful if you want to take advantage of low cost times, but don't want to use the extra power to charge batteries. There are a few numbers that are skipped in settings for various reasons, but we will move on to setting 17. This simply enables or disables the battery wake up function that trickle charges low battery banks to pull them out of a protective sleep state. Setting 18 is max generator power. This is the limit at which your inverter will stop charging batteries from generator, and if you have Gen Boost enabled, will discharge to compensate power to loads. It's best to set this to your generator's recommended continuous use for maximum fuel efficiency and sine wave quality. Setting 19 is the PV backup power. 
This allows the inverter to input solely from PV. Due to the fluctuating nature of PV input power though, there's very few niches that this setting needs to be active for. Setting 20, Power Save, will allow you to activate the power saving functions, which will trade idle wattage consumption for transfer time and low power consistency. Setting 21 is for paralleling inverters together. The options are no parallel, split phase parallel, and three phase parallel. If you're setting up multiple inverters, you're likely needing split phase parallel, as that is the 120 volt 240 volt standard in the US. You don't need to set up a master or slave inverters. This will happen automatically by the order you turn on paralleled inverters. Setting 22 is an error and alarm record list, which will show previously saved codes and their timestamps. There's nothing to change here. Skipping 23, setting 24 is fan speed. It's best to leave this at its default, as adjusting heat displacement can significantly impact your inverter's performance. Setting 25 is generator charge control. This is where you set up start and stop values based on voltage for lead acid mode or state of charge for lithium mode. Setting 26 is neutral ground bond. This is the static enable slash disable function where enable will allow the inverter to form the bond and disable removes that bond. Setting 27 is PV isolation protection. It's disabled by default as most systems will use MLPEs on the array for code compliance. Setting 28 enables or disables the RSD terminals on the board. This is enabled by default and should be wired to an external shutdown button for safety and code compliance. Setting 29 is the AFCI protection, which is enabled by default. It's recommended to leave this setting enabled. And then setting 30 requires firmware OCOD to appear and will allow you to enable generator boost capabilities. For more information on how GenBoost works, click the card in the top right of the screen or the link in the description for our detailed overview. For most common applications, these are the settings you'll want to adjust. Date and time, battery mode, lead acid only settings, initial cutoff SOC slash volts, final cutoff SOC slash volts, max gen power, paralleling, generator charge, neutral ground bond, and gen boost. Thank you for watching. For more content on the 6000 XP, click the link in the description to see a playlist. Don't forget to like and subscribe to be notified when future content arrives and leave a comment down below if you'd like us to cover something in a later video.